In today's Pittsburgh History Today, we are talking about our city's front yard, Point State Park. With the arts festival here, many of us will be in the park for concerts, visiting artist booths, and of course, just cooling off by the fountain at the point. But how did Point State Park become our playground after such a storied past? Heinz History Center President and CEO Andy Masick is here with the answers as usual. Well, you know, <laughs> Point State Park is the crown jewel of Pittsburgh's parks. It and it's is. right there at the point where the Allegheny and Monongahela formed the Ohio River, and that's one of the most historic places in America. And why is that? Well, in 1753, young George Washington arrived on the scene. You know, he was six feet, two and a half inches tall. He had red hair, and this was wild country. He had red hair. He had red hair. How Who did knew? know that? Stick okay. with me, Heather. <laughs> so. It was actually deep auburn okay. uh, hair. And, <laughs> and so he got here and, and he looked around and said, wow, somebody ought to build a fort right here at this point because whoever controls this piece of land controls the whole western part of the continent. And so he rushed back to Governor Dinwiddie of Virginia and said, we got to build a fort out there. And while he was doing that, the French came down the Allegheny River in their canoes and they said, yeah, we're going to build a fort here. And so they built Fort Duquesne. Uh, they named it after the, the man who was in charge of the, co the colonies of, of New France. And then George comes back with his team, and he gets captured at a place called Fort Necessity, just south of, of Pittsburgh. And the British don't get their fort. The French have established Fort Duquesne at the Forks of the Ohio, as they called it then. And then George comes back again with General Braddock, and they're defeated on the banks of the Monongahela River, right across from where Kennywood is today, about where the town of Braddock sits. Right. And George and his team are defeated again. And it's not till 1758 that the British finally come back with General Forbes. General Forbes was a Scotsman. And they ride in, they find the smoldering ruins of Fort Duquesne because the French have blown up their powder magazine and bugged out up the river. And George turns to Forbes and says, what are we going to call this place now? We can't call it Duquesne. That sounds way too French. So uh, it was Forbes who said, well, why don't we name it after William Pitt, the elder? We'll call it Pittsburgh. So we were Pittsburgh. We were Pittsburgh. With, and that's why Pittsburgh has an H on it to this very day. Pittsburgh. It, later on, Germans came, and there were lots of bergs in Pennsylvania. But, uh, but Pittsburgh is actually a Scottish borough. I had no idea. Stick with me, I Heather. know, I am. You're going to teach me so much. George Washington dyeing his hair red. Who well, knew? Well, you know, he was a natural. Right. Right. He didn't <laughs> dye anything. <laughs> and he never wore a wig either. People think that he wore a powdered wig. Uh-uh. He didn't. He, his, his natural hair. So in its place now, if you go down to the point, you yeah. will find the Fort. You Duke will or, not only find the Fort Pitt Museum, right. which is operated by the Heinz History Center, and you'll find costumed reenactors firing their six-pounder British cannon. Right. Uh, you'll, you'll find that, but you'll also find the oldest building in Pittsburgh. It's called the Blockhouse, and it was built as a defensive structure in 1764 by Colonel Henry Bouquet. Uh, Pontiac and the Indians of the Ohio country rose up against the British in 1763, and the, the British were trying to figure out how do we protect these forts. Forts were falling left and right. Eight British forts were captured <laughs> by the Indians. But Fort Pitt held out, and they built these redoubts, these outbuildings mm -hmm. with gun ports in them, and that's what the blockhouse is. Later on, Mary Shenley bought the blockhouse uh, in, in 1894 and deeded it to the DAR, the Daughters of the American Revolution, and those ladies have protected it ever since. It's an amazing piece of history. Thank you so much, Andy. You bet. And we all enjoy the point, don't we? You know, it's a great time to go down there right. with your family, see the fountain geysering 100 feet into the air, see the outline of Fort Duquesne, and visit the Fort Pitt Museum. Absolutely. I have yet to do that, so I plan to this summer. I'm going to do it this summer. And you can learn more about the history of Point State Park and living history events at the Fort Pitt Blockhouse online. You'll find the link at kdka.com slash PTL. And keep watching for more Pittsburgh history today here on PTL when Heinz History Center President and CEO Andy Masick joins us as a regular guest.